The first question I'm going to pose before we to, to segue into this is, um, how do we measure angles? How do we measure angles? What what units do we use? Degrees. Okay, we measure angles in degrees. Okay, now um, angles are about like rotation. Okay, rotation. So we have how many degrees in one full rotation, one full revolution? How many? Three hundred and sixty. Three hundred and sixty. Okay. Now, my question is, why are there 360 degrees, degrees in a revolution? It's a fantastic question. It's one of the first, question mark, it's one of the first questions that gets posed as soon as students, students learn what degrees are, okay? Why 360 degrees? Yeah. Because they need 360 degrees of a knife to chop someone's head off. What? <laughs> okay, that was not the answer I was expecting. Okay. Um, all right, so violent reasons aside, okay. Historically, historically, there are two reasons why we have chosen 360 degrees in a revolution, okay? The first reason has to do with the Babylonians and their number system. We have, um, we have base 10. Base 10. The Babylonians had base 60, okay? Now, it's like, oh yeah, because they had like, I don't know, I'm starting to lose count, right? Now, why 60 and why therefore 360, okay? And the reason why is because when you have something that's, that's round, right? Uh, and people have been using round things to tell the time for, well, a long time, because time itself is, you know, cyclical in nature. It's round and round and round. So, circles... 60s, 360s, they make sense to put together because they're easy to divide, right? 360 divides into, right? Now, if we think of the factors of 360, just think about this for a second, right? Divides into, well, obviously, it divides everything, divides into one, no big deal. It's an even number, so it divides into two. Keep going with me. How many other numbers divide into? It goes into three. It goes into four, four nineties. It goes into five. It goes into six. Doesn't go into seven, because seven's a punk, right? But it goes into it goes into eight. It goes into nine. It goes into ten. Now I could keep going, right? It goes into twelve and fifteen and eighteen. But just look at that. It divides into nine of the first ten numbers, right? That's really useful, right? If you want to divide something up, it helps to stay in the whole number world, right? So you make your number sufficiently large, such that, uh, you see, if you stay at 60, I think you miss out, you miss out eight and nine, right? You get the rest of them, but now that's pretty cool, right? So 360 divides into those easily. So factorization works well. Okay, that is the first reason we say 360 degrees in a circle, but in a revolution. There's another reason, and it's probably the more important one historically, and that is <laughs> sailors. Sailors. Now, what do sailors have to do with measuring angles? And I will tell you, right? Imagine you're a sailor and you're out in a boat. Right. So here's in the water. There you go, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now, you're out in the middle of the ocean, okay? And you're trying to make sure you can get from A to B. Now, today, I'm, um, as it happens, I'm going to be driving to St. Ives after school. I don't drive to St. Ives very often, okay? So in order to get to St. Ives, because I don't have it, like, right up here, what do I do? How do I get there? GPS. I could use GPS. What's my GPS going to tell me? Right, because it's not going to self-drive my car, at least not yet, right? It's going to give me directions. It's going to give me like landmarks and names of roads and like take a left here and a right there, etc. Right? Now, you're a sailor and you're out in the middle of the ocean. There are no road signs. There are no landmarks. There's just water, right? So how do sailors work out where they are? They look up. They look up, right? Now, and let's draw just for the sake of it. I'll draw this guy. There you go. You recognize that one, right? Hopefully. Okay. Now, this is actually not that bad because you've got, um, if you didn't know, one of the ways you can know which cross, because there's a few crosses in the sky, the one of the ways you can know which one's the southern cross is that um, the two brightest 
uh, objects apart from Venus if it's, if it's up are, are Alpha and Beta Centauri, and they, they point to the Southern Cross. There's a few false crosses around, anyway. Um, you look up and you look at the stars. Now here is the important thing you need to get. Stars are really great. Stars are really great because they don't really move very fast. They're kind of, you know, constant. Except for the fact that they're not, right? Because, you think about this, right? Here's the sun, and here's, here's the earth. This is the worst to scale diagram ever, okay? But just, just go with me. Now, when you are looking at the night sky, okay, when you're looking at the night sky, which side of the earth are you on? Now, my diagram, you're on the right side, aren't you? Like, because this side has day, and this side has night, okay? So what's happening is, you're looking at a particular part of the night sky, the part that you would see this way. You can't see any of these stars because they're, they're hidden by the sun and you're on the wrong side of the planet, okay? But you can see, I'm not always going to be looking around here because we're not stationary with regard to the sun, right? We're moving around the sun. We are orbiting, we're orbiting right? So we orbit like so, okay? Now let's just think about this. For example, if you go about three months later, three months later, okay? Where am I going to be, roughly? And the answer is, I'm going to be like roughly here, right? Now, once three months have passed and I'm over there, like the planet's over there, and you think about who's looking at the night sky, which side of the planet is looking at the night sky? And on my diagram, the, um, the, to the top side is looking at it, okay? But you can clearly see, at that point in time, you're looking at a completely different portion of the night sky Versus at this point in time, right? And over here, you're looking at a different portion. And over here, you're looking at a different portion, right? So the night sky, despite when you look at it, it's not moving. It actually is moving all the time. Just, you know, it takes this amount of time, about 360 days to go all the way around. And then you're back more or less to where you started. And you'll see the same configuration of stars. Also, there were like 365.25 to annoy you. Right, okay. Now, sailors, you know, pretty bright bunch, okay. In fact, sailors one of the, few, the first people to do was quite significant mathematics because the, um, the mathematics of astronomy is quite in detail. They realized, okay, look, I, you know, I've, I've been sailing for years, right? And every 360 days, every year, I'm getting the same set of stars, right? Clearly what's going on is something like rotation. Okay, do you see why it has to be rotation? Like if you looked out the window, if you're driving and you're like, you know, when you're a little kid and you've got like a long road trip, okay? You look out the window and you see some portion of road. Okay, you're like, oh, okay, that's, that's something else. And then you keep driving and then you see a different portion of road. And every time you look out, you see something different. Now that would make sense if what you were doing was moving in a straight line, right? If you're moving in a straight line, every time you look, you'll see something different. But if there's a cyclical nature of things, then rotation must be the conclusion, right? You have to be rotating around something, and that's why you return back to the same portion of the night sky about every 360 days. Okay. So in other words, what were the two reasons for why we came to measure rotation in this particular unit? And the answer is, number one, convenience. Convenience, like it's really, really convenient to divide up 360. But secondly, well, it's a coincidence, right? We're the only planet in the solar system that takes roughly 360 rotations around our axis to go around the sun, okay? Does that make sense? Like, we're, we're comparing, like, 360 days around the, around the um, in a year means this thing rotates 360 times every time it goes once around. That is completely a coincidence. And if we, came, if we were bored on different planets, right, we would all come up with a different measurement because the sailors would be like, well, it doesn't take 360 rotations to get here. It takes like 85 or 100 and, you know, whatever number, okay? So, convenience and coincidence. What I'm trying to get at is there's no inherently mathematical thing no mathematical property about 360 that makes degrees the best measurement for angles, okay? There's no inherently mathematical property of uh, breaking up the revolution into 360 degrees that makes it a better choice 
than anything else. It is more or less arbitrary, right? But it's a system that we've been working with. As we deal with further maths, right, and today will be the first instance that we do it, and uh, next year when we look at the calculus of trigonometric functions, we will discover even more. Degrees are completely inadequate, completely inadequate. So then the question becomes, what do you use instead? 